Dame Margaret Hodge, you're the UK's chair on responsible tax of the all party group on responsible tax on the UK. You've been invited to the Parliament today to talk about tax post Brexit. We've heard Theresa May suggest that the UK may become Singapore on the Thames. What do you think of this proposal? I think it's a threat of uh, becoming Singapore on the Thames that we addressed. Uh, I think she may be saying it now. Whether in fact she implements it is a different matter, and there are several reasons for that. Firstly, corporation tax levels are already low in the UK, and every time you cut 1% off corporation tax, you lose 2.3 billion in tax revenue. And the state of our public finances are so bad and the needs of our public services so great that I think that she will simply not be able to afford to do it. The second thing is, if I was sitting here as a uh, European nation, um, I wouldn't want unfair tax competition to be uh, one of the effects of, of, of Brexit. So I would ensure that in the negotiations for a trade agreement, one putting clauses around tax to ensure that uh, the UK didn't indulge in harmful tax practices, which just took profits out of other European countries uh, for no other purpose than to avoid tax, and didn't actually join, make that race to the bottom even more difficult by cutting its corporation tax. So I think a mix of the UK public finances and the power of the EU in setting the terms of any trade deal will make sure that this uh, is an empty and fake threat. Some people in today's meeting discussed what might happen post-Brexit, in particular that things may become more difficult for the UK in terms of the EU taking a tougher position on tax haven, on trusts, country by country reporting. Would you actually welcome this? I wouldn't welcome it, but it's a part of the reality. Um, Britain has, through its very weak regulation, through its uh, very poor policing and through its secrecy, all too often become a jurisdiction of choice for too many people who are avoiding tax or kleptocrats and people who are into money laundering. Um, we have avoided being blacklisted by the EU because we are a member of the EU. Once we cease to be a member and become a third country, that constraint is lifted on the EU. And if we were blacklisted, that would be terrible for all uh, the financial services sector, uh, for the city of London, and of course it would impede free, the very free trade that, we, that those who support Brexit think that we can grow after we leave Europe. One last question, a more general one. You described yourself as a passionate supporter of the European project. It's the Labour Party conference this week. You've heard some positive sounds on Europe from the leadership. What do you think the UK and your party should do now? I think we should be uh, at every possible step voting to ensure that as Brexit is implemented, it doesn't leave Britain poorer, it doesn't leave my constituents poorer. And that means we want to stay as close as we can to the single market and to the, um, uh, and to the customs union. So I will be voting every single opportunity I have to do that. And if, at the end of the day, the deal is voted down, which I think is highly likely, then I hope that the Labour Party will support a second referendum so that uh, Britain doesn't jump over that cliff edge.